so let's start this whole thing of course now i don't have the book that i wanted to show you first one second so the one i was talking about is thomas nagel uh, in germany we would say thomas nagel i did not research him i should have done that maybe but it's an excellent introduction into philosophy so um if you can get your hands on it i think i bought it off amazon so it shouldn't be that hard um and it's also really cheap it's six euros so everything that you have to know about like um yeah philosophy about moral about right and wrong about um death like the base of knowledge um in philosophy and everything that has to do with um words and how to use them in philosophy that's your mini guide and this guide is actually perfect it's so well written and i think yeah the title is what does that all mean or what's that all about in english uh so look it up that's one of the greatest recommendations i can make for um starting philosophy starting and start to understand philosophy so that's my numero uno second thing i would suggest if you start um studying if you're starting your studies in philosophy or if you want to write academically is your grandma and I don't think there is a more difficult grammar than German. <laughs> so if you're English speaking, native speaking, that's great. Or if you're studying in English, because that's a lot easier. But if you're writing on an academic level, and I think that counts for all languages, it doesn't matter. Um, you have to know how to write academic essays um, and papers because Without that, you're lost. And especially philosophy is highly text intensive. So um, you will have to write lots and lots of essays. And you will have to know your grammar. You will have to know how to put in your comma. You will have to know. Um, yeah where you will have to know how to quote you will have to know your sources and um there are different styles of quoting and um there's the harvard style and in germany there is also a totally different academic way of quoting um books phrases whatever you're reading so get yourself a guide to grammar and to quoting if your university doesn't already, I don't know, educate you in these things. Um, we have some guidelines, um, but I wanted to get into depth and I got a recommendation from a student from a higher semester and I'm really uh, thankful for that. So that's the second book I would recommend. So these two books are actually books that I would highly recommend personally. And the other books that are yet to come are books that I have to read in my first semester. So it's not something that I chose to buy or, um, yeah, I didn't have a choice. Let's say it that way. So because I signed in for, for classical literature, um, I have to read a bunch of Descartes. And uh, René Descartes um, is really famous for his six meditations. And I think it's a really good introductional philosopher, Western philosopher, um, to understand the thinking of, um, yeah, philosophers. <laughs> uh, so the six meditations, I have them in German and Latin. So the one side is Latin, the other one is German. Um, I think it's just a great spiel to have them both because some words you can uh, understand even though if, like if you haven't studied Latin it's still like you see that this is like the base language of a lot of languages um, so it's kind of a nice uh, nice to have and um, 
I got a translation that I'm gonna link down below because um, it doesn't make really sense if it's in German. I don't think that many um, of you are German. The other one that I got, uh, like I got a recommendation from my professor to get this actually, it's Descartes from Bernard Williams, Descartes, The Project of Pure Inqui uh, Inquiry. And um, it's biographical and it's really great written. Um, so if you're interested in Descartes and you wanna know how this dude became so crazy and what the hell made him write the six meditations, read this. <laughs> to end the Descartes journey, um, I also um, have this one and it talks more about his different theories and it's also biographical but not in a I don't know, not in such a cinematographic, um, personal way, but uh, more a technical way. Like, um, yeah, what are his different theories and a short uh, blurb about them, kind of. So the other thing that my professor in practical um, philosophy suggested to us was Home Tatons, Tetons, Tatons, Tetons, um, philosophical arguments or how to philosophical argue. <laughs> okay, no, no, that's not right. It's a really good book if you want to um, start building up your argumentation skills. Because I obviously don't want to contain anything from you. Um, I'm also going to show you what kind of um, texts we're working with. So one of them that I would suggest to you, if you want to start studying philosophy or you're just into philosophy, you don't have to study it academically. You can just love it and study it at home. Oh, hello, it's me, uh, Ellie from the future. Um, I'm gonna continue in a second saying that you gotta read Plato, but I forgot to actually mention what what else you have to read. I totally forgot about it. I was saying like, oh, I'm gonna show you blah, blah, blah. And then I never showed you and I just continued with rambling about Plato. So the first thing that I suggested um, according to what I got suggested from my professor, of course, is Susan Wolf's um, The Journal of Philosophy. And um, I read it actually, and it's really, really good. So this was the first suggestion that I did for some reason not manage to mention. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Goodbye. So, who better to start with than Plato, who wrote about Socrates' death? Uh, it's called Creton, and it's like this dialogue of Socrates and his beloved um, student Creton, because we're all students of Socrates, of course. The other one is. Uh, from Alfred Jules Ayer. Please correct me if I pronounce him wrong, but I think it's Ayer. It's either Ayer or Ayer, but it's Ayer, I guess. And it's called um, Language, Truth, and Logic. Um, I haven't read it yet, but I'm just telling you so you know that I'm about to read it. The other one is from Aristoteles, the Nicomachean um, ethic. I gotta look up the words before I say them randomly in English, but um, I guess that's what it is. If not, please look it up and never correct me on this because that would be really embarrassing. Um, 
Then we got John Stuart Mill, Utilitarism. I mean, do I even have to tell you? If yes, please look it up. It's so, so important to know what this is. And also, it is so eye-opening. I don't know, it, it frees up like a certain way of thinking, like your horizons just open knowing that a theory like this exists on people that actually um, live towards, I don't know, this theory or have lived like that. Um, the next one is Immanuel Kant. And you know, we all know you love him or you hate him. And uh, but there is either way, there's no way um, studying philosophy without um, reading Immanuel Kant. So love him or hate him. I'm not gonna say um, if I love him or hate him. Maybe tell me what you think if I like Immanuel Kant or not. And if you don't know yet, because you don't know me as well, maybe you'll know in the future. But let me know. And these are the basics of like metaphysics. So um, another paper that I would suggest or to read into it. Thomas Hobbes. Gotta read Thomas Hobbes. No way around Thomas. And also no way around Leviathan. Another really nice word to um, pronounce in English, but Leviathan, it must be, right? Um, go read it, Thomas Hobbes. We also got a paper about David Hume, about the affects, um, and about the morals. Um, haven't read it yet, can't say, um, can't say too much about it, but David Hume is a, I don't know, basic kind of, and we're all talking about Western, Western philosophers, okay? When I say you gotta read them, there are a bunch of other philosophers you gotta read as well, um, or you should, or you're allowed to, um, but obviously I'm not as, um, well read when it comes to other philosophy than western philosophy because i am fortunate and unfortunate enough i don't know no need of evaluation or valuing that a certain way rate that grade that a certain way but um um nonetheless um i only get introduced into western philosophy right now. I grew up in Germany. I lived in the States. I'm Greek. So everything um, that surrounds me is um, when it comes to knowledge is from a Western perspective. So please keep that in mind when I'm suggesting things because I'm more than happy to read totally different philosophy as well. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know. I mean, so, where were we? David Hume? Okay. Uh, Philippa Foote, The Truth of the Good. Must read. It's a must read. Like, all these things, it's not like I don't write them, okay? It's not about, oh, I think they're super good and you will read them and then you'll be all enlightened and it's the greatest thing you've ever read. Um, I'm not going to do that with philosophy because there are a lot of philosophers and a lot of theories you have to read to understand the whole process, to understand how to think, how to ask questions. And um, you got to read the good and the bad or things that um, align with your beliefs and that don't align. But um, you can only argue about something if you also know the opposite side. So knowing what you don't like will help you build a statement um, in an argument. And I think it's such a valuable lesson also for 
the day-to-day -day life, you know? So, and then Nietzsche, um, I'm gonna say something about Nietzsche, I think, um, maybe also growing up in Germany made me kind of adore him, but there's something about Nietzsche I really love, it's like this dark, melancholic, uh, dramatic side of Nietzsche, but he's also such a genius to me, I don't know, um, so... Nietzsche, we've got like just 10 pages out of Nietzsche's like whole um, bibliography, but man, you gotta read Nietzsche. <laughs> uh, and then we got um, an ex uh, excerpt of um, Thomas Nagel, the book that I already showed you. So that's it for now. And I'm only one month into my studies or one and a half and I've read a bunch of philosophy before but I was really into, you know, the French guys and some German, some German dudes but it was all Sartre and Camus and um, it was also a lot of literature that was kind of, you know, philosophical but it wasn't any theory or so um, and to give you an example, I mean, like, Dostoevsky, like, he has a way of thinking, you know, and you can definitely, it's like social criticism, and that adds up to asking certain questions, and that makes him, you know, partially a philosopher like each of us. Um, so, yeah. But uh, that's for the start, and if you wanna, if you wanna be part of this studies, just like by yourself, you don't have to be at a university to do this. Um, these are my recommendations, and I can only say I love it. <laughs> I still love it, and I love what I have to read. There are a lot of things where I'm like, I would have never read them on my own. Um, so I'm really, really grateful about this, and I hope to, yeah. That I, that I inspired you and um, you'll, I don't know, get nurtured out of this view. Like you're gonna run to the next bookstore and get some books. Don't freak out, don't do it like I do it. Um, but um, yeah, I hope that that was a nice insight for you into the first semester of philosophy studies because i think there are not more to come more books to come for the first semester we got our base and that's what we have to work with and so um you're welcome um <laughs> see you next week <laughs>